Alright, so this is a very easy cheese strat for Mania Training Season 5. Now the very first thing you want to do is get the Obtain Salva Doctor Grid. I recommend re-rolling for it here because it's just easier to get it here than anywhere else in this run. Now, two summoners will appear in the top right corner. Wait until both of them have shown up and revealed their cores and break them together. There's four enemies with cores are coming. There we go, there's one. Time to die. And you're not gonna have enough core breaks for all of them. For this first section, you want to go as quickly as you can to the wave clear because you have a time limit as you can see the time is ticking down, not up. So that means you only have 5 minutes to clear all time 3 of the first section. There we go, the enemy is down. The enemy at the top can sometimes reveal its core, it has 2 cores. Um, if it does, you want to break them as quickly as you can because it does a lot of damage and it can one shot most of your squishy units. Here I didn't like these buffs, so I refreshed and I got the attack speed buff instead. Where you can, it's usually better to pick a buff that doesn't have any negative effects. There's one exception and I'll talk about it later. So we're just gonna wait clear, wait clear, nothing to write home about for this section. Time to die! So instead what I'm gonna do is talk a little about why I decided to build this cross. Lani is very good here for mobbing and she does a lot of damage. I've cleared as well with McQueen and Matilda, so you can kind of just put a call breaker in her spot. But because she does a lot of damage, she's just great insurance you know, to make sure you can make DPS check in the first section. Shalom is, well, she's Shalom. You know, great wave clear, good damage, amps everyone else in your team if you have um, a certain amount of shackles. Now here you want to make sure you have lots of energy, and you know, specifically 11 has a lot of energy. Because the duck is gonna appear. Use that duck with the treasure on its head. If you kill it, you get to choose two buffs instead of just one in the next buff selection menu. So you're gonna see here, I'm making use of the puppet as well as Eleven to fear the duck and kind of keep it in place so that it's easier for Shalom to do more damage to it. There you go. You can see waiting for the fear effect to go away, and then I'm gonna put another fear on it with 11. Time to die. You can also turn on Hamel's ECB here, but I forgot. <laughs> so the duck managed to run off a little bit, but it's okay. As long as you get it, it's not a good deal. Right, buff time. As you can see, I can pick two buffs because I got the duck. Got very lucky on the refresh. Both of these buffs are very good. If you see them, pick them. Other buffs that are really good are Shalom's buff, Eleven's buff is not bad as well, Langley's buff is also pretty good, that's kind of a big reason why I picked these three, because you get um, better chances of getting a useful buff. I wouldn't say Eve's buff is particularly useful if you're running Hamel, because she does do enough healing, especially with this uh, summoned creature buff route that I'm about to take. But yeah, at the top now, you can see Langley almost goes down to the enemy with two cores, so it's uh, pretty important to get rid of them if you can. And here where the summoner appears again, you're gonna see two of them in about a second. There we go. Core break them together, so just be patient, wait for those summoners to come out together. Um, Eleven's about to run into some trouble, but it's okay, because my ground low, use the fear to our advantage, and just get rid of that enemy. That's why I highly recommend Eleven and Eve, because the fear crowd control does a lot to help in this uh, mania training phase. So here you're gonna have three bosses spawn in total. It's gonna one's gonna spawn at the bottom, Floral Moon Dancer, and then the other two are gonna spawn and walk to the top. Now Floral Moon Dancer tends to reveal its core earlier, so you can just wait a little for it and then break its core. It's lots of damage. Wipe it out. The other two tend to not reveal cores. Like sometimes you just kill them without ever revealing the cores. Sometimes they do. It's a little weird. So I would recommend just using your skills as you get them. Like don't wait for the cores. You know, we're on a time limit here guys. So just get rid of them as quick as you can. Just deal with this one. If you did not get attack or damage buffs early on in this phase, you can leak one of these bosses because it only does I believe 9 or 10 sanity. And your chief is actually able to tank that. So let's say you're here, you're like 
20 seconds left, you know, 15 seconds left. You can just let this boss walk all the way to cheap. Just move units out of their way and just let them walk. And you'll be fine and you'll pass the stage. So we're gonna save this and we're gonna move on to the next phase. I have my uh, units arranged here. So this one is really good because the Salva Doctor is now able to reduce the movement speed of enemies. If you're able to get this buff, that means you do not need to get Kelvin for the last phase. If you do not get it, you can substitute Langley with Kelvin. So here we're just gonna do more wave clear, you know, nothing too different from previously. We've got two enemies at the bottom that can reveal two cores, so just keep an eye on them just in case and break their cores if you need to. There we go, one of them revealed. So you can see, lots of damage. Kinda barely survived, but yeah, risky. I like using 11 here as well for another reason, which is that the shape of a core break is very suitable for this mania training. So I would I highly recommend running 11 and Eve for mania training if you want to have an easy time. The rest of this section doesn't really have anything to talk about, so I'm just gonna let it play through. You guys can kind of imitate the way I cleared. You know, if you're struggling, you can just kind of follow along. So I'm not gonna fast forward this part. Uh, but yeah, just watch how it goes and clear out the mobs. You can take your time here because there's no time limit anymore. So if you wanna like sit around, you know, let your sinners regenerate a bit more energy, things like that, you can just do that. It's fine. Time to die. Now here, once all these um, doctors have appeared, the ducky is about to appear soon, and it's gonna walk at the bottom side of the map. So you want to start preparing, you know, change her mouse to her ECB mode, move all your damage dealers to the bottom, move your fears to the bottom, and all that stuff. Now, because we got the Salva Doctor slows enemy movement speed buff, this becomes a lot easier. Look, look how slow it's going. So I'm just gonna use the fear, you know, keep it in place, same principle, and just hit it until it's dead. Now we get our buffs, and here we want 50% increase in defense and magic resistance, or summon creatures receive 100% increase in HP. You want either one of those, right? At the end, by the time you get to stage 9, you want both of them. But at this point, you want to re-roll until you can get at least one of them, and one other buff that's either good or kinda good, you know? So here we've got lots of mobs spawning, just shalom out, kill them up. And here is where we're gonna get the two bosses, Gekka Bijin and Sumire. Now, Gekka Bijin's gonna spawn on the top lane, so you wanna make sure you move everyone out of the top lane because she does a lot of damage. How you wanna deal with her is you wanna use every ability that you can on her when she gets close to your sinners in an effort to try and get her to use her active skill. Once she uses her active skill, she's going to jump to one of your units that has the lowest percentage of HP. Now the strategy here is that because Citri is tanking Sumire and the bottom lane, it should have the lowest HP percentage, and that's what you want. You want Gekka Bijin to jump onto Citri. Why? The reason is because if Citri dies, you can just re-summon her with Chelsea. Like immediately, with 100 HP. You know? That's why I haven't been using Chelsea's ultimate to heal. Because you could just resummon a new one with 100 HP instead of healing for 40% HP. So you can see there, she's jumped, right? And you've got to be really careful here. You've got to watch very closely to see if Citri dies. See, HP is dropping. HP is kind of wavering. And if Citri dies, you have to instantly resummon her. Or someone else is going to get killed, you're going to have a bad time. Like that. Go down, there we go. Summon her back immediately so that Gekka Vision doesn't just jump to someone else and wait for the cause. 
Once these are out, try to break her cores as quickly as you can and burst her down as hard as you can here. You really don't want her to just jump to someone else random. Sometimes her programming is a little wonky and she just jumps to someone who has full HP. It's incredibly annoying, it will lose you your run and just, just do your best here. <laughs> Again here, you'll be seeing that Fear Puppet and Eleven Sphere as well coming to really good use, helping you, you know, get that little extra few seconds you need for the healing, for the sustain, for your tanks to not go down for all the damage. And now we only have Sumire left. Sumire, I feel, does less damage, it's a lot easier to deal with than Pika Vision. So you just kinda, you know, same thing as before. Use the fears, you know, try to heal up, keep an eye on Citri's health. Core Breaker if you can, but if you can't, it's no big deal as well. Um, she's gonna go down eventually, time there's no die. time limit, so just take your time. Right, so for the final phase, what you want is to refresh on the first section for the summon creature HP or defense buff that you don't have. Just keep refreshing here. So I got lucky and I got it immediately. Just picked it up and we can go. If you did not get the Salva Doctor can slow enemy units buff, here you should choose Kelvin and you replace Langley. So put Kelvin where Chelsea is currently standing and just, just don't have Langley. Um, with that, you should have enough crowd control to deal with the units. It's okay to leak units here. So one of these tall hat people um, costs I believe 3 sanity. So you kind of don't want to deal with them, you can just leak a couple. And it's it's no big deal. Time to die. Alright, so here's the exception. If you see this HP plus 12, defense plus 12, minus 3% attack buff, take this buff. It makes your life so much easier dealing with this. Otherwise, you get like small jump scares that the boss of this phase is going to finish off Citri. Like, it's, it's really scary. You can do it without this buff, but it makes it a lot easier and a lot less stressful. So I highly recommend that if you see that buff, you take it. Now the rest of this is just, you know, it's just a mess of breaking cores, you know, wave clearing. You can kind of imitate the positioning of what I'm doing here, it's quite messy. There are lots of ways to deal with this, so uh, figure out what works for you. I think what's important is that you need to always make sure someone has a core break available, or like you have enough energy to make that happen. Because you're gonna get like a lot of units coming out, especially in wave 9. But yeah, I'm just gonna let the rest of this play through now. Uh, and you can kind of see how I dealt with all this stuff.
Time to die. Time to die. Time to die. Anti. to die. As you can see, I shuffled my units around a little bit because we're about to enter the final phase with the boss. You have to make sure the Fear Puppet is in range to Fear Garofano because you need the CC time to heal your units fast enough or you know, you're know you gonna die and everyone's gonna collapse. You have to make sure um, the Salva Doctor is able to reach Citri. And so this is kind of the layout I decided on. I'm gonna move Shalom down. Right? And yeah, after this, it's kind of just a, uh, a battle of attrition. Her core is going to come out sometimes, she's just going to break what you can, don't worry if you can't, and after some grinding, there's your clear. <laughs>